Okay, one scenario that we need to cover before we talk about how we adjust our code to work most effectively with Drupal is the scenario where we add content to the page and then we want all of the behaviors or events that we've added to all of our other content to apply to that new content as well. So for example, here we've added a background color of yellow to several of these li elements. But if we add new content to the page that includes these li elements that have an active class, we want to have that yellow background on those as well. In our current code, we would need to then rewrite that effect right after we add that content to the DOM. But there's a way we can build our code so that whenever new content gets added to the page, all of the behaviors that have been applied to the existing content also get applied to the new content too. So let's go ahead and look at some simple example code where we might want this kind of behavior being added to additional elements. I'm gonna go ahead and close Firebug here. And I'm gonna jump back to our module folder. And I'm gonna open up the eighth step which is called dynamic HTML example. Go ahead and copy this code and paste it over the code that's currently in your interact.js file and save it. We've added just one line here, down here at the bottom. And what we're doing is prepending to region content some text. When hovering over this, the content should be removed. Because above, in our code here, whenever we hover over an H1 tag, it should hide the content and then show the content again. So when we add this new H1 tag, we want that behavior to be added to it, but it won't. And let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm gonna go ahead and save the code and I'm gonna jump back to the browser and refresh it. Okay, so we see our new content added here, but when we hover over it, nothing happens. Even though when we hover over our main H1 tag, we get that hiding and displaying going on. In this next example, what we're going to do is wrap up our code in a way that is structured as Drupal expects it to be structured in order to be able to apply behaviors to new content when it gets added to the DOM. Now, one thing you could do is use a method in jQuery called live, which kind of does the same thing, but it's a bit different in its structure and it solves a slightly different problem. So typically what you'll see is the structure that we're about to cover used in most Drupal code. Okay, go ahead and jump to your module directory and open up the ninth step, which is called jQuery Drupal way. Go ahead and copy this code, and we're going to paste it over the code that's currently in the interact.js file and save it. You should be familiar with most of the content of this code, but it's structured a little bit differently, and so we're gonna go ahead and go through this line by line and talk about it. This first line here wraps a function around our code, and we've seen this in previous examples, and you'll also see this in all of the JavaScript files in Drupal core, and this is in order to be able to use our dollar sign inside of the code for the jQuery object. This next line is also a common one that you'll see in many core JavaScript files. What we're doing is taking a variable that already exists called drupal.behaviors, and we're adding a new item to it using the dot symbol. And the item that we're adding should be the name of our module. So the name of our module is interact. And so we're going to assign that here in the behaviors section of the Drupal variable. The value that we're assigning to it is a set of configuration parameters. And we delineate it by beginning with a curly bracket and ending with a curly bracket. And then assigning the configuration a key, in this case, attach, and then to the right side of the key, after a colon, we'll assign it the value. In this case, we're just assigning the attach parameter a function. And this function takes two parameters in itself. The first is context, and the second is settings. And then within this context here is where we perform all of our actions or behaviors that we're going to assign to 
content that could possibly be dynamic. And so everything inside of here is stuff that we would want to then assign to other content if it gets added dynamically to the page. Now these three lines here, this function, the addition of Drupal behaviors, and the attach parameter that we're passing through here is all conventional code. So if you look through the JavaScript files in core Drupal, you'll see these often. And the only difference really is that this item here will match the module name of the module that's defining the JavaScript file. Also, not all behaviors take this settings parameter. So you might see some that just have function and then the context. The idea of the context parameter here is that it can contain a pointer to the elements that have been added to the DOM. So whenever a module or Drupal core takes care of adding some new code to the page, they can then run a function called attach behaviors that will attach all of these behaviors to that new content. And they pass the context in which that new content was added. So we can act on that context just by itself without affecting the entire page. In our code here, we're just working with the entire page and we're using another convention to identify code that we've already acted on so that we don't act on it again. The idea here is that if we add a click action or a hover action to a particular code and then we run that code again, what happens is that behavior gets added twice to the same element. We want to make sure to only add it once. So what we're going to do, like we alluded to in our previous examples when we were talking about CSS, is we're going to add a class whenever we've processed some code to the element that we've processed. And then in later calls, we're going to check for that class to make sure that we don't process it again. So what we're doing is wrapping up our hover code here, which we used in our previous example, inside of an each loop. This allows us to check for a particular class inside of the heading tag. So we're going to check for a class of interact processed to make sure that it doesn't exist. So this colon not modifier along with a class name is a common convention for checking to make sure that our code hasn't affected this particular piece of content yet. And then we're going to loop through it using the each function or the each method, and we're going to assign a function as that first parameter. The first thing we want to do is mark this element as having been processed, so we're going to add this class of interact processed. At this point, we know that this code won't be acted on again, not by this code, because it contains this class that's checked for before any code runs. And only then are we then going to add our behavior to it. So we're taking this, which is the h1 tag that we're looping through. We're wrapping it in a jQuery object and we're assigning it a hover event. And we're just assigning it the same code that we did in our previous example, where when we hover over, it fades the content out. And when we hover out, it fades the content back in again. We're also adding some additional code here to demonstrate the adding of behaviors to new code. So whenever we click a P tag, what will happen is this code here will run and it will take an H1 tag. There's only one on our page. And after it, it will add a new H1 tag. Now in our previous example, when we added a new H1 tag with the prepend method, no behaviors were added to that because we needed to explicitly attach them. In this case, what we're doing is adding our new content after the existing h1 tag and then we need to attach behaviors using the attach behaviors method in the Drupal object which is right here and it's commented out so we can run through this code first and then see it not work and then enable this line and then see it work. Okay go ahead and save this code and jump back to the browser and refresh it. Now when we hover over our heading, our content fades out and it fades back in again. When we click a P tag, a new heading gets added and we would want the content to fade in and out just like it did with our other heading, but it's not happening. 
So now let's go back to our code and remove the comment out of our Drupal.attach behaviors. Now what we could do is pass the context here inside of this Drupal attach behaviors in order to apply the behaviors only to the context of the content that was just added. But we're just going to go ahead and apply it to the entire page and it will run this code again after we add this new content. Okay, make sure the code is saved and then jump back to the browser and refresh. I'm gonna go ahead and click on a P tag we have a new heading, and when I hover over it, now the content disappears and it reappears. Now if I click the paragraph tag again, it adds several new heading tags. And so one good exercise right now would be to figure out why that's happening and how you can rewrite the code in order to prevent these multiple paragraph tags from happening. Okay, so up until this point, we've been talking about jQuery, and writing jQuery code and wrapping it in a way that Drupal expects it to be wrapped. In our next example, what we're going to do is cover different methods of including that JavaScript inside of your code.